Lift up your heads, O you gates, that the King of glory may come in. You are the gates. Um, you're a scripture twister. This entire movement is just loaded with a language. It's just, you have to have a little apostolic reformation dictionary to figure it out. One of their new words that they're into these days, it's about shifting everything. You gotta shift the shift so that the universe is shifted with the anointing of the glory of the river, shifting for the power of the down Boring of the rain because of the shifting of stuff. We're calling forth the army of the dawn from six to nine or whenever we get it done. We're going to pray for the Nazarite generation to arise up fast and pray. New breed, young people. Hey, is that the glory cloud falling? Or Ooh. you know what he just said there, don't you? Ah, uh, me neither. It's this language. I, you're a Nazarite generation. Before you were Joel's army from Joel 2 and Acts chapter 2. You got to pray like nobody's business and fast, and then Jesus will return. In other words, they have bad eschatology, too. That was from Detroit City. They travel all over the globe packing out football stadiums. When did this all begin? In 1990, the Spiritual Warfare Network was formed by these apostles and prophets. They have been ridding cities of demons for over two decades because these people are false teachers. And if you know somebody in the New Apostolic Reformation, IHOP or the Toronto Blessing, use a language they can understand. Get out. Until tomorrow, go serve your king. Hi there, Patricia King here. Randy Clark is one of my personal um, apostolic advisors, uh, but he's also an XP channel host and an awesome man of God with global awakenings. He has, he has, he has released uh, moves of God and revivals in nations around the world. And so it's our privilege today to introduce him to you with a prophetic insight he has about the Shekinah glory. Here he is. Uh, recently I was reading in, a, in a, a book and I came across this prophecy that uh, was given by W.J. Seymour who was the uh, black uh, man that was used of God to birth the great Azusa Street Revival in uh, 1906 and also uh, w., uh, uh, Charles Parham who started the Pentecostal movement in 1901 in Topeka, Kansas. Both of these two guys would probably be the two most famous early in the earliest years of the Pentecostal movement. And uh, Azusa Street went from 1906 to 1909, pretty well ended by 1909, um, and was ending that year. During that time, there was what was called the Shekinah glory. And it was like this misty cloud that appeared very, very frequently. Some people said almost, almost every day. You could see it in, in the building itself. And sometimes there was the uh, fire scene going to and from uh, uh, the building uh, that Azusa Street Revival was being held in. And uh, um, then at the end of it, pretty much the, the uh, Shekinah glory, is a, uh, this mist you could see, and, uh, wasn't happening. And then in the uh, 60 years later, there's a man interviewing these people who had spent months actually listening to their stories and I lived with them and all. And uh, uh, it was basically about what they missed the most of that uh, revival. And they said the one thing they missed the most was she the Shekinah glory or the, the cloud of his presence. You know, it was like a misty, smoky cloud. And because um, it wasn't happening. and. So at the end of the revival, Seymour and Parham, at about the same time, prophesied that in about 100 years, there would be a restoration of the Shekinah glory to the church, and it'd even be greater than what happened at Azusa Street. Now, that was, um, there was those two men uh, prophesied that in 1909. And uh, of course, we're living right now in 2009, and uh, my thoughts about this is we must be like Daniel and when he got the prophecy of Jeremiah that uh, the Jewish people would be in captivity for 70 years he realized the 70 years has come we need to begin to rem uh, to pray for our deliverance because that God has prophesied it'd be 70 years 70 years is up so they begin to pray that God would uh, bring them out of, of Babylon which he did so for me as I read that I got really excited in my heart that uh, this is an invitation of God 
this is we're, we're getting into something to know of his timetables. And once we know the timetable and we're, we're at the fruition of that timetable, we then begin to ask him to restore the Shekinah glory back to the church uh, at this time as he said he would. Aches and he grieves for your spirit. He grieves for you. <laughs> And then in 2008 came the biggest one of all, Todd Bentley and the Lakeland Revival. This outpouring kicked off when Todd Bentley, a 32-year-old Canadian with a long-time healing ministry, came to do just five nights of meetings in one Lakeland church. Bam! We're in 214 nations a night, potential audience 400 million. And, and 10 hours a day, we're, we're literally around the world. People are seeing what's happening here in Florida. That's because God TV made the unprecedented and extremely expensive decision to preempt all their primetime programming and broadcast the Lakeland meetings every night. Now there's no question that this was one of the biggest, most publicized movements that the Christian world has ever seen. We had 550,000 different computers have logged into the webcast. That's incredible. But of course, the Lakeland movement was also loaded with the same bizarre manifestations as we've seen elsewhere. A little bit of that glory's coming on me. And we're, we have an international television audience tonight. And I got that vibrating again. Lord, let everybody vibrate. So what were some of Todd Bentley's biggest influences? Well, he tells us himself. But one outpouring that's most precious to me, because it brought intimacy in the presence of God to the church. It brought refreshing and renewal to the church was what took place in Toronto, Canada. So it's no surprise that Todd Bentley invited the founder of the Toronto Blessing, Randy Clark, to minister at this new revival. I see some of you already the power of God. It's like 110. God, make it 220. Now thousands and thousands of leaders and Christians were coming to Lakeland from all over the world to get an impartation of the Spirit. And after they were up at the front having accepted Jesus, I did something I learned from Carlos Anacondia. We just went after the demonic strongholds that were in their, in their life right then. And, and in the crowd, anywhere in the crowd, we just started coming against the demonic. People started manifesting. And uh, then I realized, uh-oh, you don't have any place to take them. You don't have a deliverance tent. You don't have a room to take them. Where are you going to, what are you going to do? And I just said, uh, take them behind me, at least uh, a little bit behind me. And you can see people, they were screaming and wrenching stuff as the power of God was causing the demonic to manifest. 